Who doesn't like dinosaurs? They were full on monsters. Types of beasts we picture in fantasy stories. Only they really did exist. The idea of going back in time and actually observing these gargantuan creatures in their natural habitat is something we'd probably all jump at the chance at, provided we could watch them from a distance. But what if we didn't have to go back in time? What if through the power of science, we managed to resurrect these long extinct creatures and observe them the same way we would with a trip to the zoo. I'm your host James, and these are the top 10 disturbing extinct dinosaur species scientists are trying to bring back to life. And we're kicking off the list with a big one, the king of the dinosaurs, the Tyrannosaurus rex. This was a formidable dinosaur that lived approximately 68 to 66 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. Known for its massive size, sharp teeth, and powerful hind limbs, the T-Rex was one of the largest land predators in Earth's history. The T-Rex could grow up to 40 feet in length and stood about 15 feet tall with a large skull filled with serrated teeth capable of crushing bones. It was a carnivorous predator preying on other dinosaurs and potentially scavenging for food as well. T-Rex likely had excellent vision and sense of smell, making it a skilled hunter. The general consensus amongst scientists is that resurrecting dinosaurs is highly improbable due to the ancient age of their fossils, making the recovery of viable genetic material nearly impossible. Despite these challenges though, the Adam Smith Institute is attempting to resurrect dinosaurs, including the T-Rex by backbreeding flightless birds. Modern birds are considered descendants of dinosaurs and the Institute aims to isolate their DNA and incorporate gene technology to recreate dinosaur traits. The Institute's vision goes beyond just resurrecting the T-Rex. They plan to extend this technology to revive more dinosaur species, expanding the controversial boundaries of the extinction efforts. Number nine, the Velociraptor. Velociraptors were about six feet long, standing around two feet tall. They had a slender body, sharp claws on their hands, and of course that distinctive sickle-shaped claw on each foot. They were incredibly predatory. I'm gonna start off with a quote by Madsen Peary, the president of the aforementioned Adam Smith Institute. Several species of dinosaur will be recreated, making their appearance on Earth for the first time in 66 million years. It will not be done a la Jurassic Park with their DNA extracted from blood-sucking insects preserved in amber. It was always highly dubious that enough of the DNA molecule would survive in this way. Instead, dinosaurs will be recreated by back breeding from flightless birds. Birds are modern day dinosaurs, but they no longer look like dinosaurs. Deep within their DNA, however, will be information relating to the time when they did. And a combination of selective breeding and gene technology will be used to give them the characteristic features of dinosaurs. The jaws with teeth, the tail, the small forelimbs. Anyway, I can't imagine dinosaurs like T-Rexes and velociraptors being brought back and then released into the wild because that would be a disaster and entirely pointless. This would definitely be a situation where they would be created purely for the spectacle of it, but that would be pretty ethically questionable as well. But uh, now that we've established what these dinosaurs would be used for, uh, basically being caged up for us to gawk at in weird amusement parks, let's move on to the next terrifying species on the list. Next up on the list is the Ankylosaurus. Ankylosaurus was a dinosaur that roamed the earth around 68 to 66 million years ago. It was a herbivore, but it was coated in this crazy armor. It was about the length of a car covered in thick, bony plates all over its body. It also had a tail that ended in a heavy club type thing, like solid bone, very powerful weapon. If a predator like Tyrannosaurus rex came too close, Ankylosaurus could swing its tail, delivering a bone crushing blow. These were like tanks of their time. It wasn't the kind of dinosaur you'd want to mess with if you were another dinosaur. As for the idea of bringing them back, in theory, it's a possibility with advancements in genetic engineering. Scientists have explored the concept of de-extinction. This would mean extracting and manipulating ancient DNA, filling in the gaps with DNA from related modern species, and then finding a suitable surrogate for gestation. But again, all that DNA is really old, so it would probably mean something similar to the uh, whole flightless bird thing, but I'm not a scientist and I don't know how 
hell they're even gonna go about that. But number seven, Gigantosaurus. Gigantosaurus was a massive theropod dinosaur that lived around 98 million years ago. Gigantosaurus earned its name, which means giant southern lizard, because of its formidable size and strength. In terms of sheer size, Gigantosaurus was one of the largest theropod dinosaurs, rivaling even Tyrannosaurus rex. It could reach lengths of up to 40 feet or more, making it a top predator in its ecosystem. It had these really sharp teeth, some measuring over six inches long, which were designed for, of course, tearing through flesh. It had incredible hunting abilities. It was an apex predator. Its large size combined with its powerful jaws and sharp teeth allowed it to take down even the largest dinosaurs of its time. In at number six we have iguanodons. These were actually herbivores so not as dangerous as some of the stuff on this list but they were still very formidable creatures and I think it wouldn't take kindly to humans walking up to them if they were walking around nowadays for some reason. These lived during the early Cretaceous period. It was a large dinosaur, reaching lengths of up to 33 feet and weighing several tons. They're known for that unique uh, thumb spike, which would have been uh, pretty useful for defending against predators. They also had a toothless beak at the front of their mouth, used for cropping vegetation. It could walk on both its hind legs and front limbs. This allowed it to browse for vegetation efficiently. It likely fed on a variety of plants, ferns, conifers, and other vegetation that was abundant during the time. Iguanodons were also one of the first dinosaurs to be scientifically described. Its fossils were discovered in the early 19th century and uh, played a big role in shaping our understanding of dinosaurs during that time. All right, iguanodons are cool, but not quite as terrifying as a lot of what's on this list. So let's get back to the uh, the bad boys, shall we? At number five, we have the Spinosaurus. This is the main dino from Jurassic Park 3. I always thought this was a really cool one when I was a kid. These are often called the Spine Lizard. It was a colossal dinosaur that existed around 112 to 93 million years ago. These spines on its back could reach up to seven feet in height. The dino itself was around 49 to 59 feet long and weighed in at seven to 20 tons. Spinosaurus had an elongated snout filled with conical teeth suitable for catching sleep slippery prey like fish. At first we thought to, it, it to be primarily a land-dwelling dinosaur, but more recent findings suggest that it was more adapted to a, a semi-aquatic or even fully aquatic lifestyle. It had large clawed limbs specifically adapted for swimming. Next we have the Gigantoraptor. These things uh, really creep me out. Imagine a turkey, uh, like ostrich type thing, but the size of a house. It was about 16 feet long and stood around 11 feet tall, making it one of the largest feathered dinosaurs ever discovered. What makes Gigantoraptor truly interesting is its unusual combination of features. It had a, a beak like a bird, which hints at a diet of plants and small animals, but it uh, couldn't fly. Scientists believe it might have used its large size as a defense mechanism against predators instead. Gigantoraptor was discovered in Mongolia, adding to the ever-expanding list of fascinating dinosaurs found in that region. When scientists unearthed its fossils, they were baffled and uh, pretty excited all at once. It was massive, but had bird-like traits, which challenged what researchers thought they knew about dinosaurs' evolution at the time. Number three, the Maposaurus. So this colossal predator prowled ancient landscapes of South America around 100 million years ago. Maposaurus was a member of the theropod family, closely related to the famous T-Rex. It could reach lengths of up to 33 feet. One of the most intriguing things about the Maposaurus though, and what set it apart from the T-Rex was its social behavior. Fossil evidence suggests that these dinosaurs might have hunted in packs. So imagine a gang of these massive predators working together, kind of like velociraptors would. This pack hunting strategy allowed them to target even the most enormous titanosaurs that roamed the region. Maposaurus was discovered in 2006 when its fossils were found in Argentina. And at number two, we have the Megaraptor. These were actually closer to the T-Rex than they were the raptor actually, but they were much faster and more dexterous than the T-Rex. They also had the use of their hands, which would have made them a terrifying threat. The Megaraptor was a member 
also of the theropod family, known for its sharp claws, carnivorous habits. These guys had enormous sickle-shaped claws, not on their feet like other raptors, but on their hands, which could reach lengths of nearly 14 inches. Uh, these claws were its primary weapon for hunting, used to slash through the hides of prey with very deadly precision. The name Megaraptor actually translates to giant thief. When this thing was first discovered, it was misidentified because of a uh, mismatched discovery of claws and other bones. It was thought to be closer related to the Velociraptor family, but it was later discovered the claws belonged to a different, larger dinosaur, leading to the creation of the genus Megaraptor. Its fossils have been dug out throughout South America. Its habitat would have been a mix of forests and then open plains, and it probably preyed on smaller dinosaurs and other creatures using those claws. And finally, we have Carnotaurus, the meat-eating bull. Just look at this monster. Incredibly intimidating, but relatively compact compared to some of its larger dinosaur relatives. It's of course known for the pair of horns above its eyes, giving it a bull-like appearance. Also kind of demonic to me. These horns coupled with uh, the deep skull and powerful jaw muscles likely means that Carnotaurus didn't just take out weaker species, but probably fought amongst themselves too, using their headgear to establish dominance over one another and attract mates. They had a streamlined body, meaning they were probably fast and agile. Then you got those hilariously stubby arms. Definitely detracts from the fear factor a bit, but it compensated with those big uh, juicy legs in the back. Its fossils have been primarily found in South America, specifically in Argentina. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.